Uh, the tricky thing about uh, doing this is that not only have you heard someone sing these two songs better than we can, I think you know who we mean, <laughs> but you've all heard the introductions as well. <laughs> and, <laughs> and if you liked watching John as, as much as we did and, and then therefore got to see him as often as we did, then after a while you, you'd be listening to John but you'd also be watching very curiously everyone else in the crowd who might be seeing him for the first time because that's where a, a kind of a lot of the fun was, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Especially uh, if you happen to be in, um, I don't know, so somewhere a little outside the normal home and some gigs at Mount Beauty, I remember, in your minor where it was just a, an off-the-street punters concert and uh, uh, I mean everyone, uh, no it's not fair to say everyone always ended up loving John. Most people always end up loving John, but uh, but uh, he could provoke too, couldn't he? Yes. <laughs> In fact, I think he almost always did. So we'll do this one without any introduction. <laughs> Except to say that the subject's sitting in the front row. Is <laughs> that enough of an introduction? I think it is.
writing a song for her mum while we were singing John <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. There's, there's, right. there's, ah. there's biscuits underneath the plan. <laughs> <laughs> we first heard John sing in 1997. And uh, it made a pretty clear impression. Was anyone not completely knocked over the first time they heard John sing? I don't really need to say that, do I? Um, and it struck me at the time, and it struck me ever since, that listening to John sing so many songs, I mean, the political songs, yes, but songs about his family, and yet they sucked you in so completely into the world. Um, and I was speaking to Locke, and I think after the, the dog gig, about how John may have been singing about his dad or his uncle sprawled on the grass, or whatever he was singing, but it was always my family's faces I saw in the songs. I suppose that if you relate to the songs so much and the, and the kind of stories they told, then that, that was inevitable because they really did tell uh, insightful stories of family. And uh, on the day that, um, of John's funeral, I, um, Chloe was home with the kids and couldn't come down, there was a lot on, but um, I thought in John's honour I'll go and do some busking. I hadn't done any busking for a while, but I thought, well what sort of, I was staying at my nan's place in Blacktown, and I was on my way to the northern suburbs there. I thought, well, where can I go busking? I think, I'll go to the Macquarie Centre. Is that the name of the place? The yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I don't think they had many buskers. <laughs> it, was just, it was just commuting Not time. Australia but, ones. <laughs> well, they were very generous, actually. They were really throwing the money in, and oh. which was probably more than I deserved. But I, I was happy to take the money. Maybe someone was watching, I don't know. So go and give him a go. But uh, as I was busking, my phone rang and my pop had died. Oh. I got the news that my grandfather had died on the way, on that day. And so what a day that turned out to be. Um, and so, like I was saying, when, well, so many of John's songs and stories, uh, it was my family's faces that I could see when I listened to John sing those songs. Um, and pop, uh, my other grandfather was a choco. And I'm not going to give the introduction to this poem because you don't need it, but I'll just give you John's poem, The Chocos. The young Australians that saved Australia. Ah, mm. oh, then who's your mate, me Johnny lad? So drunk he can hardly stand, with his eyeballs staring so wild, and his violently shaking hand. Ah, oh, his name is not for the name, but his story, I'll tell you true, he's a child of the Great Depression from the lanes of Woolloomooloo. He was reared on bread and dripping and on dollops of dull plum jam. He dodged the police and his father's boot and his fare on the city tram. He mustered with the militia on the wharves of Woolloomooloo. He fought disease and the Japanese in the summer of 42. Oh, never you mind his shaking hand or his strangely twisted mouth. He was cut off at Templeton's Crossing when the Japs came swarming south. He wept and he prayed in the jungle and God to his prayers was deaf. It was Choco, retreat on your bleeding feet. And where was the AIF? You'll find him now in Bell's Hotel, around by the Domain. You'll find him under a Morton Bay, sleeping it off in the rain. You'll find him wandering William Street without any work to do. He's a child of the Great Depression in the lanes of Woolloomooloo. He's a hollow, dirty derelict, abandoned by the fates. His soul's at Templeton's Crossing with his dead militia mates. White ladies, his mistress, they fornicate and woo, spawning blindly in the lanes of Woolloomooloo. for a drink or three in the night time. And a lot of it came down to that, those experiences in the jungles in the beginning. Uh, we've got one more, and I, I said I would um, avoid the introductions that I remember John giving, but I'll hint at this one, because it refers to the Bush Music Club. Uh, and it, Well, it refers to a, Chloe, a project Chloe and I are working on at the moment. Mark Gregory has been turning up a bunch of wonderful old shearing songs 
to the point where Chloe and I are so taken with these genre songs, including the most original of old, probably oldest version of Click Go the Shears that's ever been found. Um, you'll be glad to know that it was found in the Bacchus Marsh Express. Which <laughs> <laughs> is kind of where you'd hope it would turn up. <laughs> uh, and um, so we're, we're making the album, and the working title of the album we, we got from John, or from John's dad, Norm, in fact, because John would tell the story that he would come home in the early days from the Bush Music Club and he would say painstakingly work out the melody from the dots, from the sheet music of the latest song, the latest release that the Bush Music Club had managed to put out. And John's dad had come home and say, what's that song about, son? And John would say, oh, it's a song about shearers, dad. And the next day, Norm would come home and John would be there again working out painstakingly working out the tune on the guitar and learning how to sing the later song is, what's that song about, son? What's the song about Shearer's, Dad? <laughs> a few days of this, and evidently the quote from Norm was, too many songs about bloody Shearer's by far. <laughs> and John's response was, well, you know about working in the orchard. You go away and write yourself some words about right working in the orchard. And he came home with this. And I give it to you as your chorus to sing. Huh? You probably know it already. So. On with your pulling shirts and get the peaches in. There's 20 to the half pace and 40 to the gin. Take them down to Ermington and whack them on the barge. Half ripes, mediums, and extra bloody large. <laughs> and I think John's response was, Dad, you're a genius. <laughs> and I agree. Because <laughs> it's a cracking chorus. He and said it to a fine shearing tune. He cheer. said it to a fine shearing tune. <laughs> Flash Jack from Gun to Guy. Yeah. It works pretty well. I'd like to tune it up a little bit. Because all good shearing songs and orchard songs deserve to be in tune. Oh, that's not really good. <laughs> I'm going to practice the chorus while I shoot you Well, no, I can't say I don't know if it's any, any good looking in my shop. We couldn't find words. I don't have the chorus. We're recording it. <laughs> On with your pulling shirts and get the peaches in. There's 20 to the half case, 40 to the gin. Take them down to Wellington and whack them on the barge. Half right to mediums and extra bloody large. The boat goes down the river and it comes to the quay. The agents fall upon it to extricate their fee. But we don't get a penny, it's a dirty damn shame. Just a bill for dumping charges or orchardings again. On with your pulling shirts and get the beaches in. The twenty to the half case, forty to the gin. I'll take them down to Wellington and whack them on the barge. Half rights to mediums and extra bloody hard. I'll be down to the timber, harness up old Jack. We'll get the plowing finished while the fruit's even slack. It's only single furrow, so I'm telling you the worst. We'll descend on Parramatta with a man sized first. On with the pulling shirts and get the pitches in. There's twenty to the half case, forty to the gin. Take them down to Wellington and whack them on the barge. Half rights, mediums, and extra bloody large. The cobbling mobs to get the bag in line. The grog in Parramatta will have to buy its time. Oh, we're trying to scratch a living, we're trying to make a crust. From a row of mangy fruit trees are dying in the dust. So on with your pulling shirts, get the peaches in. The 20 to the half case, 40 to the gin. Take them down to Wellington and whack them on the bar. 